Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm visiting my friend Joe, who is a past president of the New Hampshire Astronomical Society, and we're in Nashua, New Hampshire. Now, Joe, I refer to you as our club's resident mad scientist. <laughs> as you might be able to see here, this is just a fraction of what he has here. I could not put everything in the shot. So, so Joe, how did you get started in amateur astronomy? What, it, was what? The, it was the seventh grade. Okay. And, uh, it was earth science, and I found it really interesting, and I wanted to, to learn more. Okay, so did you have a telescope at the time? or oh, I did not, Ed. What I, did you do? I saved up and saved up and saved up and finally bought a telescope. And what did what did you get? Uh, the first one I actually bought was an eight inch reflector. Okay, and it was from Edmund Scientific or it something. Was a, it was a used cave astrola. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, all right. So, how did you get involved in making this stuff? <laughs> when did that bug hit you? <laughs> right. Well, I, I loved using the cave astrola. It had wonderful optics. Uh, but it was not made for photography. The mount was not steady enough. And okay. I knew I wanted to go into photography, and I wanted to do it in a mount that wasn't going to be much heavier to me. The cave was, was very heavy, uh, but also a very, just a very good visual instrument. And so that, that desire to go into photography drove my desire to build my own telescopes. Okay, but they make astrophotography telescopes. It would seem to me that it would be easier just to buy one than it, to do all this stuff. Uh, you, you know, the, as along the way, Ed, building became my passion. Designing and building, specifically the, the scope that I want to use, the, the use case, the why behind the telescope, uh, that became the driving factor in essentially custom-built designs meant to fit what I wanted it to do. Okay, do you do all your own woodworking or do you? It's all my own woodwork. Okay, and before we even get started on the scopes, what is this? Okay. That's, that's a mirror polishing machine I built during the COVID. Uh, okay. okay, so there's motors on here that do the polishing for you? Yes. Okay, so you put the, the, the pitch in there and then the, the, the grit and then it, you turn it on for several hours or whatever? Yes. Okay, so each one, each port grit has a certain amount of prescribed hours on it. In, in, in this case, for polishing, for example, okay. um, I put the pitch lap on the bottom. I, I put on the uh, cerium oxide, a mirror goes on top, and then this goes through its motions. I can adjust the overhang and the, the lap, et cetera, uh, of the machine, but if I let it do its thing, it's very patient. So polishing takes hours. What do you do? You turn this on and go watch TV, or do you sit here and watch it? Or? I'm, I'm usually pretty close to it because this machine, if, if you let it run dry, um, bad things happen. The mirror, the, the, either the machine will stall or it'll jump the lap. I don't want that to happen. Okay, so Joe, let's talk about this telescope here first. Right. So when, when did you make this? So this was a two-year project. Uh, I started in 2017 to make them out. Displayed it at Stellafane in 2019. I uh, actually entered it with a refractor on it, uh, but I also built a 6-inch F4 astrograph um, last year and entered it into Stellafane last year. So this this is the 6-inch F4 That's the reflector? Yes. Okay. Is this real carbon fiber here? That is. It is. Okay, so the equatorial mount is not a traditional German equatorial mount. It's... There, it's, it's a little different okay. in, in this respect. The main thing is um, it, can, it can become an altazimuth mount also if I want to do bird watching. Okay. Um, you want to do bird watch? Okay. Do, do you have to use an erect image eyepiece or do you just deal with it? I just deal you with just it. You just deal with it. Mm. Okay, so there's so much on here that you may not notice by looking at this. So first of all, you don't have any tube rings. You use bungee cords. Bungee cords. Okay, and, yeah. and that's by design. You like yes. that better than rings? Yes. There's an auto guider port on this. Yes. So they don't sell auto guider port kits that you can just buy and retrofit. You, you built that yourself? Electronics, uh, assembly language programming, hand soldering, uh, the works. Would you say that the auto guider that you put on it is better than a commercially bought one? The same, or it's got to be equivalent. It's got to be equivalent. This, this guide's better than an arc second. I was out here earlier last week, and she was doing better than an arc second. Okay, so there is a clamp at the top for the where the camera is. Is that where you focus? So the focus is through a sled focus. Okay, there's a sled focus, there's a knob here, then you, and the whole secondary moves up and down. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, now you showed me this earlier, and 
The reason that this is sort of set up this way, you'll, the, the viewer might notice some holes here. This is in equatorial mode. Yes. But you can change this to Altaz mode. Yes, and I can adjust it for different latitudes, okay. but, but mainly go to Altazimuth mode. Okay. Would you care to demonstrate that right let now? Me, if I step me, up? Let me try. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So what I do is I, as I loosen two knobs and I... You described this to me earlier as the most nervous 30 seconds <laughs> of your life. <laughs> it, it, it's still a thing. I had to do this in front of the judges. I just wanted to make sure that I could do it in the right amount of time and show that it was actually pretty quick. And you did not change up. from alt azimuth to equatorial mode and vice versa. Okay. So, so now I have a basic alt azimuth uh, cannon essentially to, okay. to, to observe and, and photograph birds. Okay, so this here is a finder. Yes. This I notice has a USB port and an ST4 port in the back. That yeah. is an auto guider? This is the guider uh, scope, guider camera, and then the electronics are, are inside here. So on a 6-inch F4, you ground that mirror yourself? Um, I polished it. It was actually polished to an F4 sphere, okay. and I turned it into an overcorrected mirror to compensate against the coma corrector. Okay, we're going to leave this guy in Altaz mode because I don't want to make it put that back in equatorial <laughs> mode just yet. But this, you showed up with this one night at a Skywatch, and I had no idea what this was. This is a a, a bino telescope or a pair of binoculars? What do you call this? It's, it's an over-under binoculars. And okay. the reason why it's over-under is it's just a simple reflection. It's a simple diagonal reflection or a right angle reflection in each lens to make the eyepieces uh, work from 60 to 70 millimeters apart for the interpupillary distance. And the lenses are 100 millimeter. I couldn't match the lens into each other. So to keep that 60 to 70 millimeters difference, I move the left lens underneath. It's a, it's a concept that's been done a, a few times before, and this is my own rendition of it. Okay. What drove you to build this? I mean, you just woke up in the middle of the night and decided that you, this is what you wanted to do? <laughs> the, the, I was actually going, and I was actually going to build an eight inch binocular telescope. And there was an article in Sky and Telescope about over under binoculars. And Jerry Oltian said, holy cow, what view these scopes provide? And that sold me. I put the 8-inch telescope on, on ice and, and went and built this. It, it took me two years to design and build this. All right, so most people would get a bigger refractor and then put a bino viewer on it. That's not for you? or Boy, it's probably easier to build this than a bino viewer. Okay. Well, you can buy a bino viewer. <laughs> I could I buy one. Right, but that, that's no fun, right? That's no fun. <laughs> All right. Where did you get the optics for this? Um, surplus shed. Okay. So I, was, I looked uh, far and wide for a lens, and I had, they had the 100 millimeter lens on their website, and I snapped up two of them. Uh, what's the AF ratio? F4.5. Okay. So they were matched enough yes. in aperture and yeah. in focal length so that... Uh, and everything worked. Okay, and I've looked through this. There is very little chromatic aberration it's for something that fast. Surprisingly good. I'm, huh. it, could that be a better piece of glass than maybe you thought you bought? Or yeah, I'm, I'm going to knock on wood and yeah, say so. <laughs> yeah, because I'm really surprised something that fast. I didn't see color fringing around yeah. this. Okay, so the lenses are staggered. So this one is more flush with the with the end of the scope here, but this one is, is buried inside. So that is because the this scope to, to move the lens underneath, yeah. I have a higher vertical distance okay. from the lens up to the eyepiece. I see. And since the focal lengths are the same, I have to pull the left lens back to make it uh, reach focus the same. Okay. You can change the eyepieces? Yes. And you can change the interpupillary distance? Yes. It's this adjustment right here does that change. So you can see the entire right lens, the diagonal inside, the filter, and the eyepiece will all slide together, will all move together. Okay. So you said this took you two years. Yes. I would suppose that something that you drew up might not have worked, or did it work the first time you did? There's a lot of feasibility testing okay. in building this. The, this whole interocular adjustment was, was a big risk 
So I set it up early on. I set up something right here on the bench to stimulate what would happen in, the, in a telescope with dial indicators just to make sure everything was parallel and smooth. Okay. So could you turn that around so they could see the back of it, the, the business end of things? All right. Number one, I see, what are those chrome knobs there? These are just the, uh, the alignment of the images, left and right, up and down. Normally, you wouldn't have to touch those? Right. Okay. There would be a temptation, I think, for a beginner to... I found that out at Stella Fair. Yeah, okay. Someone <laughs> went to those knobs first. That was, a, that was, for me, it's a lesson learned for next time. Okay. The, the horizontal slot there, I assume, is a filter slide of some kind? Yes. Uh, there's, there's two filter slides. I can pull them out. Okay. And, and, and then one for each. Okay. Uh, what do you do for a finder? I don't. You don't. Okay. I um, um, I can eyeball the the um, the aim fairly well on this. Okay, so low power eyepieces in there. The magnification would be thirty five power. Yeah. Thirty five power. Okay. Now I noticed there is this thing that looks like a control here. Yeah. What is that? It's just a pointer. It's just this a pointer. Is... And what's that made out of? Uh, that's that's the end of a hockey stick. End of a hockey stick. Okay, so. What is the what is the fascination with hockey here? Is there... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the carbon fiber is very expensive, very lightweight. It's a deluxe tripod material. Uh, because I play hockey, I can get used hockey sticks where the blade is broken, where the where the shaft is still in good shape, and I have a nice collection of them, and I use them for scopes like this because it's very lightweight, very strong, and uh, and does the job. And wood tends to damp out vibrations better than, than metal does. This is, this is good. Yeah. Uh, wood is great. Uh, metal metal uh, can be made good. Yeah. Okay. With some, some uh, work. Do you have any other projects that you're thinking about doing? Next, next scope is a scope for my uh, grandniece, uh, Madeline. Okay. Uh, yes, Madeline. You, you name these after people. The people who are getting them. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. What, what is Madeline going to be? Should I ask? Mad Madeline's, <laughs> Madeline will receive a, a four inch F4 telescope. Okay. And I have the mirror, I had the mirror coated as Stellafane uh, last year. And, uh, and uh, that's next on the list. Okay, so it's a four inch F4 Newtonian. That would be a fairly small telescope. It'll be like an Orion Star Blast. Okay. Um, somehow I figure when it gets done, it's not going to look like an Orion Star Blast after you get done with it. You no, know, the, the main purpose of it is so Madeline will be happy with her scope. That's, okay. that's the main goal. How old is Madeline? She just turned five. Five? Yes. Okay, so you got a telescope for a five-year-old. Yes. Okay. Okay, so Joe, I think that you have found a collection of telescopes, or you have made a collection of telescopes, that expresses who you are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and this is not everything that he has. This is just the stuff that we kind of pull together here to show you what our mad scientist does. So, I wanted to thank you all for watching and thank Joe for showing us what you have here. And we'll see you soon.